Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Ah, uh, yeah, I am back. Um, I had to uh, take a little break, you guys, um, and hope that you miss me somewhat. But I'm back today, and um, I want to actually do this video because this is very, very disturbing. You know, because although this is a small town in Brunswick, Georgia, it's the same blueprint. Whether you live in a small town, maybe a small town could be a little worse or it could be a little better. But the same blueprint is all the the uh, a law enforcement um, environment. And that's why I say it needs to be Torn down, burnt down, however you dismantle it, it can't be reformed. And it has to be replaced with a system of justice. It's just really that simple. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome to the mental house, okay? They done drove they own self crazy with their madness, okay? And they aim to drive you crazy, just like them. <laughs> that is my only, only explanation for the narcissistic, systematic behavior that this society tries to put on people. You know, I've said it many times before that white supremacy has hurt white folk just as bad, if not worse, if not worse than it has black people, okay, and I know y'all are, are going to get mad, I don't want to lose y'all right now, just please bear with me, let me finish, let me finish, can you imagine being told, being encouraged, being made to disrespect another human being, told that this human being is trash, told that you can put all your hatred, and in fact, if you don't exhibit ex uh, abuse towards these people, I'm going to whip you. You know how it is when your big brother or your big sister tell you, if you don't fight them, I'm going to fight you. Okay. There's white children that was looking at that going, because hearts are born pure. They are. Hearts are born pure. And I know through the ugliness, it's hard to see that sometimes. I get it. But what happened was, the little kids was looking at that, and they mamas, and they daddy was going, and you better do it too. And they would get, some of them would get whippings if they didn't do it. They had to be trained into that psychotic, sociopathic, narcissistic behavior. They had to be trained, I mean, really trained to accept chattel slavery and all the abuse that came with it. So now remember, if you were a person that had to make your mind accept this as normal, just as the people on the other side had to accept that abuse as normal, do you understand how wickedly brilliant that was for both sides, actually? And I hate to say wickedly, I mean brilliant in the same, but it was wickedly brilliant. So now white folks have gotten this idea that they better than us. That they can, again, piss on us and tell us that it's raining. We don't have any feelings. We can, we we um, uh, oh, got everything that we're subhuman. Listen to this. Us, the one who gave civilization to the world. The ones who gave us, who had them studying at our feet. And because they know, the, 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 the scholars of them know who we are, okay? Know of our greatness. They have dummied the rest of their, this society down to try to erase us. And just like they're trying to erase us now, they have erased with these savages that are out here, um, uh, um, 
against uh, 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 wearing the mantra of European or white people, white Americans. The, the whole nuance of where the greatness is, they know. They're scholars like Leakey and Mendel and all those scholars. They knew the greatness of us and know. Okay? But we didn't know. So we were easily... So now that William Brothers over here and you got centuries and centuries of forgetting who you are, replacing your language, replacing your mores, replacing your culture... The white folk that grew up under that oppression, they don't know no better either. They think we really ain't shit. Even though we, they can watch us play basketball and, or whatever we get into, we dominate. And they go, ooh, ooh, oh, God. But if they see us on the street, or if they see us in Centilla Shores, Unless you were LeBron James or can throw a football, they can't accept you. They're, they're, uh, uh. Do you understand how psychologically damaging that is for them? To make us the proverbial scapegoat, black and brown people, and that they're the best and they're everything when they really aren't shit because they had to steal everything. They've even stolen the land they standing on is stolen. So it's and they had to actually tell their generations this lie after lie after lie after lie. So they could get this false impression of who they are. And that's why they can have this feeling like, what are you doing in my neighborhood? What are you doing in like Bensonhurst and Yusuf Hawkins? Where the boy went over there to get a a, a, a you remember that? Y'all remember all that stuff. This is nothing new. If you don't know what happened in Bensonhurst, look it up. When I heard this interview with Ahmaud Arbery's family, I was hurt, so hurt. Because it, it's what white supremacy is. It, what it, it's what it looks like, y'all. It's really what it is. And so these people have been taught that they're everything and we ain't nothing. And so the great, great, great grandchildren of these people think it ain't nothing to kill somebody, cover it up, especially if they black. I mean, they'll cover it up if it's white. Look what they, look what they did to John Kennedy. <laughs> okay? But if it's black, it ain't even worth two dead flies. It ain't worth two dead flies. That's why the police, who your first line of you think help, you they calling you and telling you some bullshit that uh, uh, it was a home invasion. And your son tried to break into a home and he was shot dead. End of story. Goodbye. That's what they do to black families. Okay? Because they think, they've been trained to think that we so stupid. You know? Well, you know, that's it. We're going to believe they lies. We'll piss on them and tell them it's raining. You know? They even thought the slave was dumb. They tried to, because they, they didn't teach him to read. They, did, they, they tried to hold that stuff back and everything they did, they thought that that would kill our intelligence. But it couldn't. Because <laughs> I don't even want to go there. Okay? At the end of the day, there was always some white woman that was teaching the slave how to read. Okay? At the end of the day. So I have to keep my mind open. Because there was some of them that knew just like it is today, that this shit crazy. I belong to these crazy people. Oh my God. And I bet not say nothing. The woman in Scintilla Shores, the one that spoke out. Y'all ain't heard about her, have you? I know because she had to sell her house. She'll probably be doing an interview soon. I don't know. She may not. But she had to pack up and sell because 
They shot through her house. Because white supremacy is like a religion, a way of life. And those that step outside of that, they've been brainwashed to believe this now. Remember, we we own this, this our neighborhood, get your gun, no black people should be in it. This is our world. You just a squirrel trying to get a nut. And nothing could be so farther from the truth. And in a psychosis, they don't even see the Native American. They don't they they see us all as hub human. And them is all powerful and all knowing when actually it's really the other way around. They're you know, so without going too far with that. Look at their history and look at ours. Look and see who the, um, you know, who's done more to destroy the planet. Okay? With all the resources and all the greatness that they've been empowered to be, they've done nothing but destroy with it. So, when I saw this interview with the uh, um, Aubrey family, I want to share it with you. And this is a very important and copyright. I'm a, I'm gonna um <coughs> I'm gonna plead uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna plead. I'm gonna put up a, a, a copyright infringement up on this because I want um so that's gonna be the five second gap in between here. Still learning a lot of this stuff, you guys. But it's really important that you understand what happened. And let me play this. And y'all deal with this um, interview. This is going to be a long video. So bear with me. Okay? And I really, I, I think, um, well, let's just do this. Let's just do this. And I want y'all to listen. Ahmaud Arbery was shot and killed in Brunswick, Georgia on February 23rd of 2020. Months later, the video that went viral of that shooting death drove hundreds of thousands into the street demonstrating. Ahmad's father, Marcus Arbery, recalls going to the scene of his son's death and shares his thoughts on that emotional visit. Marcus, can you take us to that day? I know that had to have been unimaginable the pain. I'm seeing your siblings, just the pain in their eyes. That day. That's the worst time of my life. What hurt me so bad, how they killed my kids and lied. They told all of them lies. They told the mama lie. The detective liar kept lying. They ran my, uh, uh, to me, it was a racial Let's mom. You lie like that. On our law enforcement, lie like that. It's the worst time of my life. When you Swore on the oak like that, and you don't want to do your job. People getting killed. My kid got killed, and y'all started with lying to me and my mama. Good thing me and my brother and my sister did our homework. Don't folk were lying to us so much that they wouldn't even talk to me and my brother no more. What did you see in Tatilla Shores? See you went there that you hear that? I seen all my kid blood on the ground. My my brother showed me where the spot where he was murdered at. Part of blood was on the ground to try to wash up, but you know how blood is, they couldn't even wash it up. Ran him down and murdered him. Ran him down. And Lord, when that video came out, it like to kill my two children. It like to kill my family too. Because we've never seen nothing like that in our life before. I'm thinking I'm looking at some racial movie that on TV. I, I can't believe nothing like this happening, bro. How do you totally let something like this happen in a little town like this now? I, I can't believe that. I was really shocked. I was like, no, nah, that, that, that couldn't happen here. I know Rachel was bad, but I ain't know it that bad like that. And I want to lay out the dates for this because this happened February 23rd, 2020. The video was not released until over two months later. So what was happening before you saw the video? You said you were told that this was a home invasion. Tell me about what was going through your mind when you first heard that. 
I know it was a lie because my kid don't go out like that. He ain't had that to do. He ain't had that to do. He got his mom and aunts all on him. Anything he wanted, he got it. He was the baby. Anything he called his mama for, his dad, his brother. And y'all know how we do our babies. My son had a dream. That's why he walked out. He ran. He had a dream. He was dreaming. He wanted to go in that rain. That's why he ran every day. When he owned something, he owned it. He didn't have that to do. I knew it was a lie. A home invasion. I, me and my brother already know what time was. He said, no. A home invasion. No. Gary, I see you reacting to that. A home invasion. Look at this Okay, I was at work when I got the call. This is the police. Sister, JT, his partner, who he ran with all the time, he called me about three or four times that morning and saying Quiz got killed. And I said, Quiz got killed. And he said, yeah, Quiz got killed in a home in home invasion, trying to break in somebody's neighbor house. So I said, no, that's not Quiz. Like, I so I kept hanging up on him. I kept hanging up. And then about 10 o'clock that morning, he called me again. He said, Gary, you need to come home. He said, I'm telling you, Quiz got killed. So uh, I said, well, how come he got killed? He said, he broke into the neighbor house. He kept on saying that right there. I said, man, that ain't Quiz. I said, well, why you ain't killed? I'm serious. I'm telling him just as in why you ain't did. Because y'all hang together every day. If he went in the house, you went in there with him. So I'm looking at him negative. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the way I'm thinking. And, uh, so I'm looking at him sideways, everything. So I go pick him up from my sister's house, Ruby house. I said, let's go out there where Quiz got killed there. So the first thing I do is go to his I'm not going to bore it. I mean, I'm not going to play all on this. Tape. This is the main part you know I want you to hear. Like I said, you know, I studied a lot of stuff. When well, you I hear the main I part. I tape around the house. I said, he ain't got killed him. Ain't no burden with him. Right so here. So we got a call saying it happened in Centilla Shore. So I get in my car. I ride over Centilla Shore. This was that Monday. He got killed that Sunday. I ride over there. And um, I don't see no tape around none of the house. So we keep on riding. We, I see the spot off the river in the middle of the boat with blood everywhere. Blood I everywhere. Said, hey, got killed right here. So I got out the car and started walking. So I started to put my hand on the blood. I said, yeah, this is blood. So I got a towel out of the back of my car. Mm. Soaked it down with water. I took that towel and rolled it across that concrete asphalt. Turned up red, uh. red all the way across it. I took it. It's in the back of my car right now. I took it and sit it in the back of my car. I said, he didn't get killed in no home invasion. He got killed in the middle of the road right here. Uh. William, what was going on from your vantage point? Uh. Moment, were you also in that neighborhood? Yeah, I, 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 I was oh, my God, y'all. So it was right then and right there that they discovered that the law enforcement had been lying to them. Well, they knew. They gut told them. All right? Because we know how y'all lie. We know you're lying. We know we don't trust you because of you have had a habit of mistreating us. You know, we don't, like, a lot of us don't mess with you like that. You know, and be honest with you, most of us really don't unless it's a a, 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 a relationship that we've had a long time. Okay? Um, and more than likely, it is always a, 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 a relationship that is um, based on us giving you and you giving us. Right? It's always um, that type of relationship um, on a professional level, that is. Um, because, like I said, y'all accept people like LeBron James and all the other celebrities that you put forth, and you can look at them as uh, not black. How that guy said, more than black. But uh, Ahmaud Aubrey, who lived across the bank, he wasn't looked at like that. He was looked at um, a nigger invading our space. A nigger invading our territory. 
All right, this is the end of part one because I got to finish this and I don't want to make it too long. So I got to make it in part one and part two.